Have you ever wished you could know what the future held before you got there? What if you were given the gift of knowledge before you even began your journey? Now, I've been thinking about that because I made a lot of stupid mistakes when I was younger. And I wish I had someone to say, don't go down that road, go down this one. I'm Sherry and welcome to From the Eyes of Wisdom, where we are pairing an experienced elder from Krista Senior Living with a passionate King's High School student ready to launch into the world. And while these conversations won't tell the future exactly, they did reveal a lot we weren't expecting about how to live life well. Are you ready? I can't wait for you to hear this. All right, everybody, time for another episode of Through the Eyes of Wisdom. So glad to be here. And today we have Beth with us mm -hmm. and we also have Mariah with us. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're talking today about something that's actually very near and dear to my heart, music and performing arts, which mm -hmm. I love both. So I'm very excited to have you guys here with us. And we're just going to talk about that. And Beth, your very wonderful life in music. And Mariah, your interest in performing arts and just get some wisdom from Beth and questions from Mariah and just your interest and what mm -hmm. you have in common and all of that. We're going to talk about it, okay? Love um, it. Beth, talk about your mom and music and hymns and mm -hmm. how that got you involved in music. Wow. All of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Uh -huh. Because my mom was a pianist mm -hmm. and had been a Christian since high school. Mm -hmm. And then she had studied piano as mm -hmm. a young woman and then continued playing. And so she was currently, I mean, at the time I was little, mm -hmm. like up under age seven, Yeah, she was the pianist for the church that uh, she and my dad oh. attended. Okay, My mom wanted me to learn how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. So she started teaching me probably from about age five or six. Mm -hmm. But then she knew that I should study with another more professional teacher mm -hmm. outside of her influence. Okay. And so she got me started when I was seven years old. Wow. But she also made it a point to request the teacher to help me learn to play hymns. Okay. So from that early time, I was, inter you know, said, well, let's use our skills to honor the Lord. Yeah. And be able to serve in the church in yeah. some way. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's Beth and her mom, right? Yeah. Tell me about you and your family, youngest age of thinking about music and performing, and this is just what we love and what we do. Yeah. What do you remember? Um, well, what I remember is, yeah, my family, my both my parents did Young Life, uh -huh. and so they were on specifically the program teams so all the skits and things. Yeah. And my mom and dad would be do like a duo thing, so they mm -hmm. would be ones running it. Uh -huh. And so I kind of always had that like, performing like gene in me yeah. and specifically music was more my dad mm -hmm. his granddad who really inspired him for music um like kind of brought him into that music world and then brought me into the music world so a lot of singing growing up was singing like country songs with my dad in the car and mm -hmm. um a lot of worship music as well mm -hmm. um it was that's kind of in general is that's the way I like communicate with God and like connect with Jesus is mm -hmm. worship I always have music playing in my car. Um, I love dancing to music. Like mm -hmm. s some of my favorite moments growing up was dancing in the kitchen with my dad mm -hmm. um, just while we we're making food. Um, mm -hmm. So it's always just intermixed in my life in different important ways. What is it about music that connects us so much that it makes it so such a deep, rich experience mm -hmm. for you and your mom mm -hmm. to have that, for you and your dad to mm -hmm. have that? What is it? Why does it connect us so much? Is there any, what do you think? Either of you, I don't know why. Yeah. I just, it does. It, it's, it's, it's in my family. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Music is meant to be shared. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that comes out as sound, but it's organized sound. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it's pleasant sound. Yeah. yeah. it can be. Uh -huh. anyway. Yeah. And I think that's part of it, that it invites collaboration. Mm -hmm. Ah, um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I prayed when I moved here to Christwood Park was that I would find people that I could be collaborating with in music. And mm -hmm. I really love playing piano duets. Uh, My mom and I used to do that. Oh, yeah. And um, I've had a good time 
finding people along the way since I've been here. Uh-huh. Um, opportunity to do some concerts down at Christwood Park yeah. with another person and as as duo, as a, a piano duet. Yeah. And um, so that collaboration is, is mm-hmm. I think, really special. It is. Yeah. It ever. is. What do you think? Why? What yeah. Do, why do we? Why do we connect so deeply with it? I think. Yeah. It's just. It's a beautiful art form. Mm-hmm. It's truly like an art form. Mm-hmm. And I think whether it's the lyrics or the music, like the notes itself, like it mm-hmm. just evokes kind of an emotional like mm-hmm. reaction for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it can make you sad. Like mm-hmm. it connect with morning or it can make you really happy yeah um and the different notes that correspond with it can evoke emotion as well yeah. and i think that it's and it's very particular to each song mm-hmm. and both in worship like in worship music just like those slower songs where it's just like you feel like it's more of that feeling like you're just it's slower and it's just you're really just feeling the presence of god and in the ha- like the happier ones mm-hmm. um it's just, yeah, it's just evoking that emotion mm-hmm. that just makes you, like, feel a certain way and connect with both what you're, just everything you're hearing. You have the collaboration, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the emotion. Mm-hmm. And so that if we're mm-hmm. collaborating together, then when the emotion comes, we both felt that together. Exactly. Right? And yeah. so then it's like we had a shared emotional experience yeah that makes sense to me because i theater is one of my favorite things in the world and why Mm -hmm. i love it is because of collaboration it's Mm -hmm. because this thing doesn't work if we all don't work together exactly right so Mm -hmm. you you can be fantastic at what you do congratulations Mm -hmm. but you better be good Mm -hmm. or nobody Mm -hmm. cares how good you are because if you're horrible Mm -hmm. when you we will all go down in flames so i think that collaboration and then us feeling emotion together Mm -hmm. is something that um that just it unites what tell me about hymns a little bit like i i just i love hymns like if i could like i just love hymns so what 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 do you think? Because I think we're losing them a little bit. I don't want to sound curmudgeon-y. Like, I don't want to be that person that's like, oh, this newfangled worship music, take me back to the hymns. I'm not being that person. Mm-hmm. There is something special about hymns. 100%. What is it? What that Those those songs, I mean, I, re- I remember my mother playing them. Uh, she still does. Uh, or my grandmother. What's, what is it? Mm-hmm. Those songs that it's, I don't know. What? Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of those were carefully thought through in terms of the words for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly, a n- number of hymns like Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, or um, th- the tune came from mm-hmm. classical music, mm-hmm. Beethoven, mm-hmm. Bach, Brahms, some of those tunes by famous composers mm-hmm. were, were kind of borrowed ah. by people in the church to say that's a really good melody we're going to put these words to it mm-hmm. a lot of people had heard the tune and so they would continue to sing it yeah one of the things that interested me in going to live in another country in a particularly an asian country was becoming aware of a different style of music mm-hmm. and realizing that sometimes our hymns if we take the hymns that we're familiar with in the United States, yeah. and we think, well, everybody should sing those. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You take them wherever you go in the world, and you think, well, this is how we sing to the Lord. Uh-huh. And um, one of the things that I really like to see promoted is the development of hymnody in each culture. Mm-hmm. Hymnody? The, the concept yeah. of creating hymns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That people be encouraged okay. to sing. Yeah. And um, there is a couple, the Gettys, that live in Ireland mm-hmm. over the last, what, 30 years, I would guess. Um, Keith and Kristen Getty have mm-hmm. been writing uh, a new style of hymns. Maybe yeah. you're familiar with some mm-hmm. of those. But okay. We've done incorporated a number of them into the church here okay. in the United States. Yeah. But I'm just thinking that's wonderful that mm-hmm. it's a newer style, mm-hmm. um, comfortable, easy to sing. Yeah. But but we honor people in different cultures yeah, for what yeah. they have to bring. Yeah. So you have traveled, uh, Beth. Tell me about mm-hmm. your traveling and your... Um, you know, the, carrying this love of music, this understanding of music, this studying of music, going to other countries. 
something that Mariah should be looking for or eyes open, ears open, thinking mm-hmm. about? Mm-hmm. Well, I think what I'm thinking back to was the very first mission trip that I went on mm-hmm. when um, I was a student. And I lived in Southern California, but mm-hmm. we then went into Northern Mexico and just across the border. We were expecting to sing in Spanish. Okay. And I loved that. I was excited about that. And mm-hmm. So as we went, I, you know, we learned some new co- some of the choruses in Spanish, yeah. and we learned not American music, but mm-hmm. we learned some some Latin American yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. worship music. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that, and to wow. me, that was exciting to yeah. realize, oh, yeah, it's different. Yeah. You know, it's, and, 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 but they're worshiping God, mm-hmm. and we can learn from that. And, and to me, it was just an expanding of a, a horizon. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. of course, as a musician, that's great. You'd learn something new in music, and yeah. you kind of take it in and do more with that. I love that idea so. of learn. How, what can I learn? Yeah. I can learn something from this. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. All right. What can I learn from this? Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you see that in it. What can yeah. I learn from you? Yes. Yes. So, That's good. But, Going... but the learning attitude yeah. takes you into all kinds of adventures. So one of the things you talked about, um, Beth, in your pre-interview that I thought was so interesting, and I really wanted Mariah to get this because being a creative myself, I was like, yep, I understand that. Yeah. Is that you were talking about you're, you're in college. Uh, I think originally you were thinking about a career in music or as a as a um, were you thinking about doing like becoming someone's musician or, or a church musician or something like that? Looking for that. Yeah. Possibly. The love and the passion you have for mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. doesn't always translate to the career to a career. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't necessarily have to. And it shouldn't. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to put out the fire of the passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it seemed like in your life, you did other things, but the passion for the music was still there. Mm-hmm. So can you talk about, you were, You met your husband in seminary, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. talk a little bit about that and then what the two of you began to do. Well, I was interested in music in a cross-cultural set- setting, mm-hmm. just yeah. trying to think about what that would mean elsewhere. Yeah. And really had a an interest in ministry in another culture. And I didn't know where that might be. Mm -hmm. And um, so in going to seminary, I felt this was good training um, for whatever I might do in the future and went to a a seminary seniors conference Mm -hmm. back in Wisconsin where there were seniors from seminaries all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. My husband was from Pasadena from Fuller Seminary and I was from a different seminary in Southern California. But we enjoyed chatting together and talking Mm -hmm. and got better acquainted. And then when I came back, when we came back uh, to Southern California to finish our schooling, we, it wasn't that far away that I was able to, yeah, we were able to to visit and got better acquainted. You guys get married and then Mm -hmm. what, you go on an adventure together or? Well, we certainly did yes, because he had been, he'd become a Christian and through, uh, somebody within Campus Crusade that had come Mm -hmm. and served on his campus where he was studying. And through that also became interested in Japan and had gone to visit the person who had developed the ministry, the Japanese man. Mm -hmm. And um, Bob really did want to go back to Japan. Mm. And so I thought, well, that's interesting. And Uh. I hadn't thought about Japan before, but as we talked about it and prayed about it, um, you know, I thought, all right, this is a good direction for us to go. We were involved in campus ministry there, but I quickly got involved and was interested in just what what was happening in music and what were people singing in the Mm -hmm. church and how could we do that. So You go there. How do you begin to learn what the music is? Like, how do you you just sit and listen? Hmm, That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Okay. I mean, that's what what we chose to do. Okay. We felt that would be important. Yeah. The church will be involved in the local church here. We were there to, to learn and to, to just get along and understand how they worshiped. And mm-hmm. so that for me, that was really interesting because some of the tunes that they sang were, were ones that they learned from, you know, Westerners. Yeah, yeah. And those were formal. They had mm-hmm. Japanese words to them. But, yeah. But then there were new kinds of music, new, new text, and new music, and new style. Mm-hmm. So it was good to me. I just enjoyed learning that very much. Yeah. Appreciated. Yeah, and so tell me about the. There was a book that you 
created? What was that when you were there? Well, one of the things that I was particularly interested in was training mission training church musicians. Okay. And how do we how do we do that? Yeah. And help them. And one of the things I liked to do was uh, arrange hymns. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd take a hymn tune, but then I'd change the chords or add a different little rhythm to it, yeah, whatever so cool. else. Yeah. And so I thought, well, how can I encourage my students? And so I ended up for 10 years mm-hmm. teaching in a Bible school in Tokyo. And so my students all had to learn to play the piano as mm-hmm. they came through this Bible school program. Wow. Um, but then I would, you know, work with them in the hymnal and and then encourage them to make up and try to show them how this is how you change around, you know, the tune mm-hmm. or, or add notes here yeah. or there or put some different chords. And so that's what happened was that I then, and you won't be able to read very much on here. You might mm-hmm. be able that's to find my name him. in English yeah. somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. But um, it was just how to do piano arranging. Wow. I was just giving them ideas. And it was for your students. For my students. So the opportunity is there. The opportunity is there. And that creates the passion to and create. And the passion to, yeah. To what, I love what, that. What mm-hmm. kind of, what, what's needed? Yeah. You know, is ah. it just being the example and teaching? Or is there, you know, there wasn't anything like this okay. available uh-huh. to use. Where, I mean, you know, if you took basic piano lessons or whatever, there were all, all kinds of systems mm-hmm. out there. You could go to the bookstore and start yeah. buying books here, there, and on about mm-hmm. how do you learn how to play. Yeah. But in Japan, there wasn't anything like this mm. available That's, for church musicians. So it's more like, so, what's the need, and how I, what, can I be an answer to that need? How can I? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that it, that's it. Yeah. yeah. How can I be an answer? And I think that... Yeah. Okay. So tell me what you think about that. I think that is so, like, creative that you just were like, okay, so there's a need, mm-hmm. and I'm going to fill that need. Like, mm-hmm. that... Is wonderful, and you've touched so many mm-hmm. kids' lives with mm-hmm. just like this book. And mm-hmm. I think, yeah, that's absolutely amazing. That's the reason though, why I like to do what I do, which is performing arts and theater, mm-hmm. is the fact that I'm able to touch people's lives even for two and a half hours, two mm-hmm. at two hours, two and a half hours, mm-hmm. just give them that joy and mm-hmm. have them like just have a fun afternoon. It mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. what makes me just love what I do so mm-hmm. much. Oh yeah, you you sense, don't you, the emotional connection? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're providing that moment of joy. Yes. Or of emotion mm-hmm. of of I mean, it can be full of pathos and yes. mm-hmm. concern or anxiety or yeah. Whatever that is in what you're singing, yes. but yeah, it draws on that from that mm-hmm. from the listener, hundred mm. percent, and uh, for them to learn. But then they remember that, and that's another part. Yes, mm-hmm. I think especially when in performing arts, mm-hmm. that those memories. I mean, we think back on when we've gone to different kinds of concerts or mm-hmm. how, whom we've heard mm-hmm. sing. Yeah. That that's that's in there that's a yeah. clip in the memory in the yeah. brain that'll come back and they will can remember yeah oh once i heard this yeah yes, yeah sing and loved yeah. what she sang sang mm-hmm. and the yeah way yes. she sang yeah, it, it and tru- just your whole yeah. attitude yeah. in yeah. singing yeah it yeah. truly gives me so much joy when people like even months like i see someone just randomly and they're like oh my gosh like you did amazing in mm-hmm. le- like for example i did mary poppins mm-hmm. um oh. last spring oh mary my gosh poppins. it was oh, that's where i would have seen you then yeah. I oh yes you came to that <laughs> yes i came I, to that yeah. oh yeah yes i sang um i was the bird woman i sang oh, feed the that's birds right. oh, so my oh i love that song oh, my, <laughs> thank you so much so you and your husband have this life in japan how long were you there a uh, total of 20 years, wow. although we spent some um, additional years in the U.S. training okay. other people. My yeah. husband came back and studied at Fuller Seminary and then got involved in an actual group that uh, worked with establishing a church growth institute in okay. Japan. And so he was uh, involved quite a lot with, with that. How many children did you have? We have two. We two have, children. We have a son and a daughter. And did you, you, I'm guessing you had them over there. When you um, were... Our son was um, six months old when okay. we first went. Amazingly, and this is God's provision for mm-hmm. us, uh, the first home that we had in central Tokyo, where to- homes are tiny, tiny, mm-hmm. and close, close together, the people that lived next door to us was a, was a Japanese family, mm-hmm. but they had just come back from spending six months in Los Angeles. Oh, and wow. so they spoke a little English. Okay. 
which was perfect yeah. because I didn't speak any Japanese okay. yet. Yeah. Yeah. And so we got to know each uh, other. Yeah. And then they had a little boy who was close in age to my son. Oh, my gosh. And so those little boys could kind of... Look at that. Oh no, the provision. Lord's, yeah, the yeah. Lord's provision is... It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Why Actually, my, my name means the Lord will provide. Um, it's from the story of Abraham and Isaac, um, the land of Moriah. Oh, um, okay. So that was... The reason of my reasoning of my name is just like, um, yeah, my parents couldn't have kids for seven years, and mm -hmm. um, I was kind of a miracle baby, mm -hmm. and my parents didn't even have Mariah on the table, and my the the Lord spoke to my dad very clearly, like on kayaking trip, and the Lord just speaks to him so clearly that my name should be Mariah because of its meaning, so. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that exciting? It's it, I it's mean, yeah. yeah. And how many how many siblings do you have? I am also the oldest. Mm -hmm. I have two younger siblings. My brother is a freshman here at Kings, and my sister is in sixth grade at a school called Villa Academy over in Laurelhurst area, where mm -hmm. I where I used to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Oh. And so you you and your husband were married how long? Fifty six years. He Fifty passed long. away a year and a half ago. I'm sorry. So yes. fifty six years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, he, you stayed 20 years in Japan, and then well, you came back here, and you were mm -hmm. where? In, so, we, back we to were Southern in Southern California, California okay. until about 20. We, we moved up here about 20 years ago, okay. Christwood Park. Yeah. And then you, oh. you had some trauma in your life, I, whatever yes. you feel comfortable talking oh, about. Oh, yes, I'm very open to talk about anything. Okay. I um, lost my mom. Um, let's see. It's, uh, May of 2020, so that was mm -hmm. almost three years ago. And, um, yeah, I, I, we mm. actually came to King. It was all during COVID, which honestly was a blessing in disguise because mm. I didn't have to go back to school after it happened, mm. um, which was really, which, which was pretty nice. And then we actually came to King's. Um, we, I was originally set to go to Roosevelt in, mm. um, during in the U university mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where I live in the U district. Oh, um, okay. I was set to go there, and then some of our very close friends were like, hey, maybe you should check out Kings, because my dad was um, a newly, I mean, a single dad, um, just getting mm -hmm. that support of a small Christian school, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to come to a small school again. Mm -hmm. I had a horrible experience coming to a small school, um, because I couldn't make any friends, and so, but we came to Kings, and it has been the mm -hmm. most amazing blessing I absolutely love it here, Good. and I have a, a lot of amazing friends. So I'm happy to hear that. Yes. So I'm you sorry. asked you asked a question in your um, pre-interview. Mm -hmm. uh, they asked you what would you ask Beth, and you you asked a question that I thought was interesting. Yeah, it was something along the lines of um, m how music and your faith helped you through loss, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I was yeah, kind of asking, like, how you used music through different points in your life, whether your through life. La loss or mm -hmm. through happiness. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like, how you used music to, like, express your feeling or how, mm -hmm. how you process. Because I use oh, music good. a lot to process. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good question because that happens, too, you know, yeah. very much. Because, yeah, you know, my mom was... You know, so so instrumental in getting me going in music, and mm -hmm. so at the point of her home going to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, I just was thinking, yeah, what do we celebrate and remembering the special songs that she liked? Or, yeah. But uh, I think especially the more poignant loss has been for my husband's leaving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, he didn't feel like he had a good singing voice, but he loved music. <laughs> uh, and, that was my, you know, we that was my mom. I use music uh, in thinking back and being grateful, you know, yeah. for his life and life that we shared together. Mm. And uh, I know that I'll continue to do that. And um, I think music has a really important part in bringing healing. hundred mm. percent. Yeah, I, I remember uh, my mother, my grandmother was a very, 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 very musical person. And uh, I don't, I don't, I didn't think I realized how musical she was or how how good she was at it or how she didn't live she didn't I didn't know her that way I'll put it that way until there was a uh, very popular photographer of her day who had his um his work on display in a museum 
And when we went, someone was sending me all the different prints and stuff, like copies of the prints, and my grandma was, like, was all over. And so that means it was a thing to get her picture. Oh, my God. And so, and it was all of her different, like, plays and her musicals and her stuff. So I, I guess I didn't understand, like, how popular she was. But I just remember her homegoing service really mm-hmm. feeling what you said, which is, mm-hmm. you know they're with Jesus, you're hurting, but you want to celebrate. And music is that thing. It goes back to what we started talking about. It's that thing that ties it together yeah. that both allows you to mourn and celebrate. 100%. I just don't know. There how. you go. Yeah, it right? It just seems like an odd combination, but yeah. it's true. But, yeah. It's a, a kind of a gamut. I mean, yeah. you know, very, very distinct yeah. experiences, yeah. but certainly part of the whole. Isn't, isn't it amazing how God loves us? Yeah, that that's. I think music is one of those things that's like he must really love us mm-hmm. to yeah. give us that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we mm-hmm. get to that we get to experience that, and then you get to play because you still you still play the organ. Am I right? Did I hear that right? You did. I'm okay. I'm still the organist at yeah. the church that we've been, I've been a part of almost twenty years. Yeah, yeah. Ladies, this has been wonderful. I love talking about music and talking about. Um, its effects on us yeah. and mm-hmm. what God allows us to create mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. he allows us to enjoy. I hope you've gotten some wonderful wisdom from that. Yes. <laughs> and well, it's fun to collaborate and, yeah, just, and to share each other's mm-hmm. expression and experience. Yeah. And passion. And joy. Yes. That's what's fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's delightful to mm-hmm. see younger generation. Yes, you've caught the yeah. You've caught the bug, the music bug, yes. and, yeah, yeah. Enjoy, and the performing, and, and yeah. see that in a positive way, mm-hmm. not in a self-focused way, right? Which, but of the joy that it brings other people. Yeah. And that's, that's she's already written some stuff down, but I'm going to put you on the spot and say, she's going to carry that card with her oh, all yes. through her life. I, b- mm-hmm. I believe I she's going to have it when she's 25, 35, 40 years. Remember this card that Beth gave me oh. this wisdom, right? <laughs> yes. no, it's if amazing. there's one thing that you could impart to her, one mm-hmm. word of wisdom, one thing, remember... Mariah, if you don't remember anything, remember this. What would it be? I think it is do all to glorify God. Mm. Mm-hmm. That what we what we do, we want to honor God with it, yeah. and that's yeah. If we prayed about it or sought wisdom or have enthusiasm for people's lives to change because of what we're doing, yeah, yeah that that does it. Yes. I love Thank that. Thank you so much, Beth. And if I can piggyback off that, specifically in this kind of arena, mm. when you do things that get you just by virtue of how you, what you do, applause, mm-hmm. that's going to be very important. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not doing that, that applause will get in here. And it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has, it has a possibility yeah. to do that. It does, doesn't it? It does. It and, and distract. Yes. And then your reason is just to pump up yourself rather than to... You know, introduce yeah. God's love. Yeah, or help people find Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it happens quick, and you, it, it, it can happen quickly, mm-hmm. and you almost don't even know it. So that is, uh, for what you want to do, mm-hmm. what she just said is probably one, mm-hmm. one of the greatest pieces of advice you mm-hmm. will. It seems simple, but it's probably one of the greatest pieces of advice you yeah. will ever get. And if I were you, I'd get that printed in all different. Oh, it's in, it's in her Bible. Yeah, though, get, to do get all it to big, put it all God. over the walls and everywhere. No. <laughs> put it in your dressing room, wherever you are, and remind oh. yourself, he gets the glory, not he me. Gets yes, glory. He gets the glory. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in once again. And we'll see you next time, unless this is the last one. And if it's the last one, we'll never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> till the till next season. Till the, the next, next season. season. Yes. Uh, the through next the eyes season. of wisdom. Thank you all. <laughs>